All right, so we are now back in the fourth video for the inking. So as you can see right now, things look okay as pencils. You know, you got the main main gist of the page. You kind of know what what's gonna uh, what it's gonna look like towards the end. Uh, but now, what we're gonna do now for inking uh, for the inking process is try to clean things up as much as possible. So get all the clutter out the way. Like for example, the layout here, this layout layer. It's no longer necessary. We know, you know, uh, where things are, and there are some panels that have 3D references as well. These uh, 3D dolls, they can get out the way as well. Uh, for this one, for example, uh, panel number four had one, so you can get that out the way as well. And then panel number. Seven, I believe, had one as well. Get that out the way. Okay, so with all these things out the way, we can get straight to the inking part. I ink in two stages. Okay, so I like to ink uh, first just the lines, the you know the standard lines of of the actual objects uh, that are going to be drawn, and afterwards on a separate layer, I like to ink the shadows. Why? Because sometimes I can make a mistake in terms of the shadows and be like, ah, oh, I should not have put so much uh, darkness there, or you know, you can just change your mind um, during during the drawing, and then it's just so much easier to have that on a separate layer uh, in order to you know make things look clean when you start editing. Put it that way. So to give you an example, um, I'm gonna start focusing on panel one now. The pencils, obviously, they can go down uh, considerably as well, so maybe up to 20, yeah, 20, 20 something. Uh, and then I create a new layer and call it ink. For that, I will use my inking pen, obviously, but that's another thing that might be um, interesting to mention. I use a lot of shortcuts uh, because it just makes things easier and especially uh, as I'm also drawing on my iPad Pro uh, thanks to AstroPad I yeah I quickly just want to press some buttons on the keyboard instead of having to use the mouse and always going to the menu so the way I have set it up is uh, for example when I press the letter P which is already standard in the um, in the app anyways uh, it goes to pencil and pen, these two. So you press P and keep pressing P again, then it switches between pencil and pen. I have the same for a brush. Uh, when I press the B button, it goes to oil paint, and I press it again, it goes to airbrush. Uh, I have it set up for a lasso tool because I use the lasso tool quite a lot, so that for me is the letter L. Um, I have then the E for razor, which is standard in the software. Uh, I also have the F for fill, you know, when you have to fill an entire um, plane. Uh, let's see if I have any other ones. And the S for quick auto select. Uh, and I think that's it for now. These are the ones that I tend to use the most anyways. Uh, but it's very useful to have a look yourself. So you can always go to Clip Studio Paint and then Shortcut Settings. And here you can modify all your shortcuts. So here you choose whether you want to um, change shortcuts within the main menu, the options, or the tools. And then here you look for, for example, in brush, you know, you just click on it. Uh, and you can even say, oh, but I use watercolor a lot. So you, you know, you can assign a whole bunch of uh, letters. And here, as you can see, you can assign the letter to different um, tools. So if you want to group them into one category and say okay these are all brushes for me so that you can just give them all a letter B so quite useful to know and uh, there you go so I'm gonna start inking now um, for that I'm gonna use the G pen which is really a very good pen uh, the brush size and stuff will obviously be modified the opacity as well another thing about opacity now that we're on that you know how in Photoshop you have your numbers from 1 to, so say 1 is 10 for opacity, 2 is 20%, 30, 40, and so forth. Now in Clip Studio Paint that's not um, standard into the settings, so again, that that's definitely worth doing in your shortcut settings. 
um, it's just a lifesaver, you know, it, it just goes very fast. And your brush sizes, you know, you can also, with your short keys, you can just uh, modify. Uh, your anti-aliasing, or however that's pronounced, I never get that right, uh, that you can also modify that here, and a whole bunch of other settings. Uh, again, you can always go to the window and then, um, where was it? Yes, the subtool detail, and it will give you even more details on how your brush works, you know, for inking. Very, very useful. I mean, if you want to do something a little bit more special or, you know, you, the thickness and, you know, your spraying effect, your stroke, all of it, it goes very far. So definitely worth having a look. Uh, I'm just going to keep things simple, but I just wanted to mention that it's there. Uh, it's extremely customizable. All right, I'm going to start inking and you're just going to see that uh, in a much faster tempo. And then I'll get back to you when we get to that second phase of also inking the shadows.
Okay, so now that the inking process is finalized in terms of the line art only, I still have to do um, the second stage of inking, which is the lighting, so the shadows and stuff like that, you know, to give it all a bit more volume. You know, now it all just looks like flat lines, and you know, you obviously you want to avoid that. Uh, you, I still have to do some proper line weights and you know all this little thing so I'm gonna do that panel by panel I'm gonna start uh, obviously over here and then work on the individual extras so yeah what what I'll do now is just add a new layer to it and just create that detailed ink I'm gonna call it detailed ink which will basically showcase or create more of depth basically uh, just a bigger depth now if you're an inker, I mean, you can perfectly do this straight away. But me, you know, I like to, yeah, separate these two in case I do make mistakes. I mean, I like to give it time, basically. Okay then, and as you can see, the inking phase is now completely finished. Now there's still a couple things that uh, you could do. Like for example, uh, there is panel number three, which is this big one. Um, here in the operation tab, so in the tool property, you go down to the frame border, uh, and this one technically doesn't need to be drawn. So you can also remove that. Uh, this is for frames that are uh, used as background, for example, that are going to take up the entire page. So that is one. And there was another one. I believe it was panel 7. The same thing. Uh, you can take that one out. Draw border, take it out. Um, then maybe some last things that can also be done. For example, on the actual panels itself, so when I when I look at the drawing itself like this, I see, you know these borders here. I'll zoom in on them a bit. These borders, I would like them to be a bit thicker, uh, simply because my lines are you know um, also a bit thicker in general, and I want them to be a bit more visible. So in order to do that, you can just go to your panel settings again in the tool property and you go to the brush size. In my case, an ideal one is about 8, I believe. I'm quickly going to test it. Uh, it seems about better. I mean, here you still have the number 5, here you have the number 8. I like the 8 a little bit more. Uh, I can always change it towards the end or later on, but 8 seems okay. So I think I'm going to do that for the other panels as well. It's just a repeat operation. Just keep bringing it like that. Then we have panel 4 below it. Bring it to 8. Panel 5, which is next to it. Also bring it to 8. 7, no, because I have no border. This same, bring it to 8. And panel 8 as well. Bring that to brush size 8. Another thing that might be very interesting to notice 
is I'm going to focus on panel 1 again. And okay, so I'm going to zoom in a bit. Actually, you can see it perfectly here in panel 2. Do you see how these lines are very, like, there's no anti-aliasing on it. Like here, for example, with the uh, with, uh, um, G-Pen. Right here you have it, but here no. And you will notice that when you print. Um, so what I tend to do in this case again is when I'm on the panel itself, right, this I haven't found it here yet in this particular uh, tab. So I go to the subtool detail and then I go to the frame border. No, it was the anti aliasing uh, thingy here. And I like to put it to middle, right? So I do that for this one as well to the middle and number four as well. Put that to the middle. Five. No, panel seven. No, because it had no borders. Panel under that as well, and panel eight as well. So let's quickly have a look and see the difference. So see, it looks different now. It looks a bit, you know, when you zoom in, you have this uh, thingy here. Right. So that's it for now. That is inking. Command zero frames it back into place. I hope you guys liked the inking part. It was a long part, but that's because I like to ink in a lot of details. Now it's all ready for coloring, and that's what we're going to start looking in the next video, seeing what we can do, what techniques there are in Clip Studio Paint. I'm not going to go over all of them because there's a lot of different ways of coloring, but We'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. All right, see you guys on the other side.